All right, the theme music means it's time to start. It is uh, time to call the December 12th Architecture Review Board meeting to order. Uh, Steve, if you could read the roll, please. Sure. Bob Heimel. Here. Zach Rusk. Here. Dave Alday. Here. Jerry Jones. Here. Joe Clark. Here. Richard Lindy. Here. And Pam Lang. Here. We have a full house today, excellent. Nice. Uh, if everyone would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under item three, any potential conflicts of interest needing to be identified for board members? Hearing none, move to item number four, looking for an approval of the Architecture Review Board minutes from November 14th. Move to approve. That's it. We have a motion and multiple seconds, as long as Lene got one of them. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Thank you. Our first item for discussion today is the proposed construction of a building addition at Johnston's Bakery at 3320 Whedon Creek Road. Uh, if that team could come to the podium and make introductions and give a brief description of what's being proposed. Hi, I'm John Johnston, Johnston's Bakery. I'm Jason Aarons with Distinctive Design Studio. Um, so there's uh, some uh, growth in the frozen dough uh, market and uh, we're looking to uh, uh, put an addition onto their existing uh, building on Wheaton Creek Road uh, for production uh, and cold storage. Um, and we're looking to uh, match the existing building uh, in appearance uh, with the same uh, colored siding and uh, uh, CMU wainscot on the south side and the uh, uh, matching the uh, cooler and freezer panels um, and the intent is to just match what's there. Um, be a metal building, a metal pre-engineered metal building with uh, metal siding uh, and the standing sea metal roof. Jason, could you speak a little to the uh, the landscaping on the south facade? What's intended along there? So, <clears throat> so the intent of the landscaping along the south side is to break up the length, because uh, it's a long building, uh, and the intent is to use some of the landscaping to kind of uh, break up the length of that building uh, so it doesn't seem quite so long. Um, and there is already some... Uh, existing landscaping there that kind of hides the building. Um, so that was the intent uh, behind that. Yes, a question I would have for the board. The, the proportion of the building, the existing building with its masonry wainscot base uh, works fairly well, but as you extend that, a lot longer on that south facade. It, it starts to get that pancake effect, that it's long and horizontal and we're reinforcing it with the, um, the wainscot. We do have a slight projection where the building comes forward a little that I think will help. Um, but looking for thoughts from the board as to whether the, just continuing that existing design is the best approach, just matching what's there or if that, that shift in the facade would be an opportunity to do something just a little different. And, and then how much the landscaping we want to count of to uh, take the place of architectural detailing. We, we have this discussion often. 
Granted, this is an industrial park, so slightly different considerations from elsewhere in the city. Um, but yeah, when you take the landscaping away, it's a pretty bland facade. So thoughts for discussion, Jerry? Thanks, Steve. Yeah, I see where you're going with that one. I think on the years that I've been on the committee, I've always tried to take time, uh, the location and what we're trying to achieve. And in this instance, where it's located does play a major part of my thoughts on this because I took a drive out there. And just you know, extending the building, matching what's there. A lot of cases, I don't think that's the right move. But here, considering what they're using it for and where we're located, I applaud the use of the landscaping because that will break it up. It's mature trees that they're going to be putting in, and considering what it's what it is, you don't want to overdo it to a certain extent. That's just my belief. So I think what they're doing here by matching the existing facility and at least giving us an attempt at the landscaping really breaks it up. There is the slight projection, which I think gives us a little relief, but um, overall, I, I think it's the perfect move for this particular building in this location. Great, thank you. Other thoughts? Anyone differing opinions? I move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved as submitted. All right. Thank See you guys tomorrow. Much. Thank you. See you, tomorrow. Yes. See you tomorrow. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Our next item for discussion, number six, is the proposed construction of a new View 14 Apartments, the southeast corner of South 14th and Illinois. Uh, if your team could come to the podium and introduce yourselves and then give us a brief uh, update on what you're proposing. Yeah, let me, um, give me one second. Maybe maybe one of the first things you guys I'm sorry maybe one of the first things you guys could do is maybe just uh, uh, clue everyone in a little bit on the site location and I'll get that map up for you but I don't know is everyone familiar what uh, site we're talking about this was a former Sitco gas station a couple of years ago southeast corner of 14th in Illinois there's the uh, uh, Thomas Engineering or uh, Thomas. Uh, is right across the street. You have the take five in the area over here, and then you had uh, kind of a, a residential neighborhood to the north side of um, Illinois. The screen. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm I'm talking and I'm not showing you guys. <laughs> so here's the <laughs> yes, yes. So the neighborhood on the north side here. You got Thomas Industries. Um, on the west side of 14th, the BP gas station, take five, and then this was formerly a sit-go uh, uh, service station. Uh, probably knocked down for about maybe three years now. So, and then these gentlemen had approached uh, the city as far as uh, taking a look at this site for apartments, and the property was rezoned earlier this year, or la late last year, I can't remember, somewhere in that area from the commercial to an urban residential, and that yeah. was approved from the standpoint it was kind of a mixed use neighborhood. So that's why they're here today and looking for uh, approval of the project and that they'll let you know a little bit more about. Yeah, absolutely, thank you, Steve. Um, my name is Tyler Sheeran with Commonwealth Development. Um, with me here, I have Lucas Petrie and Josh Sommerfeld from m and Design. Um, so as Steve mentioned, this is a 48 unit uh, apartment complex that we've been in the works with on the city staff uh, since about 2021, uh, in the spring of, um, and kind of began the rigorous process of securing low income housing tax credits for this parcel. Um, fortunately enough, we were awarded those this spring um, and now kind of been engaging, uh, obviously, the design process to get the plans approved um, and in place so that once <coughs> winter conditions have evaporated and spring 2023 is around, we can get uh, in the ground and begin this process. Um, we have purchased this parcel and completed a pretty extensive environmental uh, clearance process. Um, so we are making really good headway and kind of ahead of the schedule as to where we anticipated. So, so long as we do not have a harsh winter here and um, we should be ready to go, obviously subject to your guys' approval. But um, specifically as it relates to the plans, I'll let Lucas and Josh kind of elaborate on any questions or details that you guys um, would like to hear about. Sure. Uh, so I don't know, Steve, if you, if you do want to do this site 
plan, maybe I can start there. Sure. Um, mainly, mainly for that uh, electrical easement that we kind of mentioned. I'm trying to think if I got that. Yeah, it might be one. right. Uh, it, I'm trying to think. I may have, I may not have gotten that on this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, if site plan. Can, site plan would work too. That's yeah. Fine. Or um, this one. That's fine. This aerial, I don't know if that shows it that well, but if anything, I can get the pictures back on. Sure. So uh, basically, the the way that we have little constricting uh, constrictions on the site. So they're on the south end. I'll call it two thirds of the way down. There's a uh, is it 30 feet, 30 foot easement that runs right through there for overhead electrical po uh, power lines. So we were pretty limited on where this building could uh, could be placed uh, with the amount of units that we were trying to get on the site. Uh, to make it feasible. Um, so right now it's basically anchored on the corner of 14th and uh, Illinois up there. So um, we have a small leg that um, anchors uh, uh, 14, or no, is that 14th, this one? Yeah, yeah 14th. And, and then Illinois um, is the longer leg um, that is more oriented towards uh, the single family residential up there. So uh, if you go to the uh, rendering or elevations, what we, what we basically tried to do was um, we, we took the, um, that north end and um, kept it at three stories yet, but we tried to uh, pull down the, or you know, break up the facade, but pull down on a more residential feel with porches and individual entries to some of the units that are on that first floor. Um, and, uh, and then obviously with different materials, uh, broke that up with, um, a, a combination of horizontal siding, um, shakes and, uh, a, a kind of a board and batten panel, um, on the corners. Um, the other part of it too, uh, we didn't want to do a flat roof. Uh, we thought this would look a little more residential with, with the pitched roof shingles. Um, and you know, kept kept the windows again in, in a more residential feel with a you know single hung windows, um, and then we'll landscape the 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 surrounding building um, uh, accordingly, um, and uh, and then um, we accommodate the on the inside of the site with dumpster uh, that uh, houses uh, the recycling and trash required for the unit or the tenants and uh, a maintenance shed. And then on the southwest corner of the site, uh, we just have a small monument sign. Um, and then uh, anchoring off that, uh, going towards the east, we just put a privacy fence uh, that kind of shielded that, um, our site from that, that uh, um, take five uh, um, take site five. to the south there. Sorry, I'm moving around for you. Yeah, no, yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's it's anything a lot, a lot in particular. Sorry about, that. <laughs> Sorry about that. You need more screens. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Go back to the elevation, or anyone have a preference to which one to? Whatever you're ready to take them, but. You go first. <laughs> We'll let you go first for a change. Okay. Sure. Uh, my, my first question had to do with the corner there, which is great. Uh, it's up right now, uh, right there at the corner of 14th and uh, Illinois. I think that's LP Smart Side uh, Smart yep. Board, if yep. I can read that, if you can go up a little bit. Yeah, right there yep. on the corner, LP Smart Side. What were your thoughts? Uh, because that's so much different than everything else as far as the rhythm of what the architecture says you kind of set that out by itself any yeah, thoughts we, behind that yeah we wanted a, a it's a much nicer material obviously but uh thought we thought kind of um sort of a, a cape Cody sort of view uh, feel to it um, um that that kind of helped um set the the corners and then we we took that and actually put that material on all on all i'll call it six corners but mm -hmm. um sort of sort of uh blended it uh uh, throughout the building then yeah because it's a little more lower profile in the roof area as well and yep. it just has yeah, a different so feel that to thing it. is set up a little it's a, it's set up a, an extra foot there too so mm -hmm. it kind of creates sort of a little tower element and that does that project out from the other yep okay yep. Uh, thank you yep 
So I'd like to thank the team for the work you've done back and forth with the city. I know that you guys have been talking for a long time, and yeah. I appreciate your willingness to, no, was, to keep moving the, the project forward with yeah. the, the feedback from the city. I think it's ending up in a, a much better place than where it started a while back. Um, you'd mentioned the dumpster enclosure and the shed, uh, and I may have missed it, but I didn't go digging on the elevations to what the uh, materials on those are. Yeah, so the, the, the shed, uh, which, which is what you see right there, that'll, that'll be exactly the same stuff that's on the, on the main building. Um, sh uh, the horizontal siding and then uh, the shingles. And then the uh, dumpster enclosure will be a, a split face block. Again, we'll match colors to the building. Um, and then a, uh, a vinyl slatted uh, um, uh, gate that'll, again, cover up everything that is kind of what, what's inside the, the corral. Coping material on top of the dumpster uh, so enclosure the, wall. Uh, aluminum coping that goes around the top. Yeah. And then any rooftop mechanicals. It's a big roof up there. Are we going to be seeing anything? No, nope. uh, they'll just be your, your miscellaneous um, uh, venting. Uh, just that the exhausting, I should say. Um, and is that noted to pull it to the back side? Yeah, we usually try to. Roof? Yeah, at all costs. Yep. So it, it should sit on that inside corner. Uh, we'll call it courtyard. Um, but yeah, all the condensing units are actually either in in units, uh, so like a magic pack unit. Okay. Um, some of the bigger units can't house that uh, that big units because we have a mix of three bedrooms in there too. Um, so there are a couple uh, ground surface ones um, that will just will uh, landscape uh, screen around them. But that's all to the back side. Yeah, we tried to we tried to push everything as far back or on there the inside. There are a few condensing units that are along um, yeah. Illinois Ave. If you pull the landscape plan up, Steve, yeah. you might be able to. And there's just no zoom in a little bit on the. If you want to just take that north end there, for example. <clears throat> Any um, on the north end, the the north facade, uh, that street side along oh, along the, Illinois. Oh, the uh, perspective. Nope, you can just zoom in there. Okay. Uh, it'll show the actual condensing units in there and where we have the landscaping sc screening, I guess you'll say. So kind of in the in the corners there, uh, the interior yeah. corners, you see those yep. the the squares. little squares there? there is so they're setting inside there. Oh, okay. Yep. And then we just, we'll, we'll put some taller shrubs and stuff around there that should screen those. Dick. Yes. On uh, one of your elevations, you show black lines on the corners where those battens are located. Yep. I rather like that look. I wonder if you could actually do that and make that part of the project. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're saying the, the where the where the panel is? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Those will be in there. So the the, the batten is actually darker than the panel. Oh, oh, you're oh. saying a different color. Yes. Oh. <laughs> no, those are those are actually going to be the same. Yeah, it would the match shadow it. Shadow lines should yeah. emphasize that. Correct. Well, you yep. were both talking at the same time. Could you clarify <laughs> what you were saying, please? Yeah. So he's he's just saying that they'll they'll be the same color. The shadow line will create that black line that you're kind of looking at. There'll be a three quarter inch reveal on, on that batten board, so, so that'll it, stick it's, out. You'll, you'll see a shadow line that will be black. But I understand. Oh. But uh, my question is, would you be willing to make those battens a different color? <laughs> um, it's a little unusual. Um, we can see what it looks like. Oh, so you'd consider it. I would consider exploring it. My first shotgun is it might be a little busy. Um, I wouldn't want to introduce a new color per se, um, but we would definitely be willing to explore it. So if it was the same color but shaded, that would work for you? I think it's worth exploring. Okay, good. Glad to hear that. And thank you for not putting shutters on it. <laughs> I'll second that one. Thank you. That'd be a lot of shutters. A lot of shutters. Sure. <laughs> 
Other questions, comments, Jerry? Uh, just a question, if I'm coming up Indiana because it's such a steep hill there, what's my, gonna be my view from Indiana coming up that hill just past take five, yeah, go to my the view next, from the back? Uh, it'd be right there, so that side. So that, so the, the panel is again repeated on, on that's what I was kind of mentioning on the six corners. It's, it repeats itself um, on each corner. Got it, okay. The panel yep. kind of anchors the corners, so. Got it, <clears throat> that helps, thank you. Yeah. Do you have a projected completion date in mind? Um, <laughs> you know, right now, subject to winter conditions, we're trying to kind of break ground in April, um, projecting about a 14 month build. So call it middle of summer 2024 is what we're shooting for right now. Okay. How many, yeah, how many uh, residencies are in there? Or uh, there's 48 units. units. Okay. Yes. Mix of one, ones, twos, and three bedrooms. Yep. And a, a couple of them, the ones that along Illinois are, are kind of a townhouse style unit. So you've got a stairs within, there's two stories. So kind of nice. So those are the folks who will have access from the ground yeah. right into their yep. unit? Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, what is there, seven of them or eight of them? Uh, yeah, kind of something along yep. those lines. Yeah. Yep. They'll be able to access seven. those from the main building, from the main entry on the interior courtyard, but they'll also be able to utilize their own private entrances. Got it. You just have street parking, or is there some parking out in the back? Nope. Uh, so we right now we're hitting about a one and a half. Um, oh, there it is. Okay. Yep. I did, I one and a half. So yeah, it's all on the the southeast side there. Yep. Got it. And again, we're <laughs> we're playing with playing the game with uh, where uh, those electrical lines come in there. Mm -hmm. So we were pretty limited on how we we're uh, contorting ourselves uh, with fire access and all that stuff with yeah. with the site. Those overhead power lines were a driving factor. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know uh, we'll deal with this more at Planning Commission tomorrow where it'll be, but uh, the two homes in the back, those are not part of this? That's Correct. Okay. Yeah, to the uh, east you're saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. no, no. Okay. Yeah, actually, I think, um, you know, this this map still shows that there's something there, but that has actually been raised. Yeah. So that's oh, no longer gone. there. Those are gone. That's correct. Okay, okay. So that, we're trying, we're trying to get these guys by them, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you, you did you did inquire, didn't you? Yeah, the, I think the problem there was that just for the timing perspective, yeah, okay. because we have to submit our application so far in advance. Um, I think when we first were looking at the site, one of those houses actually was still there. That's just okay. how long we've had the project yeah. in works. But okay. um, yeah, the hope is that obviously those remain vacant, but in the event someone does purchase and rebuilds, it should not be an issue for the site. Okay, that was more my question. Sounds good. I believe we, we show uh, some landscape screening along that side of our property as well. We originally had uh, talked about a fence, but I think uh, we all agreed that maybe some landscape screening would be a little bit more appropriate. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, it's one of those don't deal with it until you have to kind of <laughs> issues, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. I make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations and exploring um, Dick's request on the uh, trim on the corners. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, if you can clarify, Jerry, how much. Yeah, I don't. Uh, <laughs> so basically just to submit something at a staff level. I would say yes at a staff and, level. And uh, it would be approved there. Dick, are you comfortable with that coming back at a staff level to look at the contrasting battens? Yes. Perfect. Great. So if we're all agreed on that, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved. Right. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. See you guys tomorrow. Yep. One other quick item before we uh, move on and adjourn. Um, we've had discussions over the years, and it's never really gone anywhere, <laughs> and would like to percolate it a little more again and get your thoughts after the new year. Um, but trying to figure out what we might be able to do to improve the process for applicants coming in, especially for them like the, the bar owners or some of the, the recent applicants who are coming in fairly late in the process, just looking to get their permit, and then any sort of feedback architecturally is almost too late for them to be able to respond to. So how to encourage those applicants to be thinking further ahead and submitting things. Are there things we might be able to offer 
from the city or just as from the architectural community to help with some of that upfront planning, especially for clients who don't want to be paying for architectural services? Yeah, I think that's the difficulty. If you don't have an architect engaged up front, I mean, you want to do it on your own, you know, if you're just expanding what you have. I think the rules, are, I don't want to say the rules, the guidelines are pretty clear. You come in, you talk to the staff, here's what I want to do. But my uh, encouragement would be for those, especially who have an architect involved, become aware of what's being proposed early on. Don't be surprised when they get to the committee because it seems like we get a lot of clients who come in and they have no idea what their architect is talking about. Yeah, <laughs> and there's there's a major disconnect. There seems from between what they talked about and what shows up here and we're giving feedback on what we see and then all of a sudden the owner is going, well, I didn't know that was in there or I wasn't aware of that. So more communication to them up front. For those working without an architect, I would just encourage him to come and talk to Steve as early in the process as possible so he can lay out, here's what you're going to need to do. Yeah, and just so, just so everyone else knows, um, you know, typically what occurs is as soon as the projects start coming in, we as a staff meet with them, whether it's myself, our building inspector, our engineer, landscape planning director, and start having some conversations early on. There were a couple that actually took advantage of coming in before they actually submitted like the couple of gas stations mm -hmm. um, at Tidy Store. Mm -hmm. You know, those that we've had some kind of questions. So it's something that I offer um, all the time. So that so we are trying to do that before it gets to you guys and try to do a lot of that work ahead of time. It doesn't always work. I think the trouble is the ones that come in last minute and hey, I wanna get my permit to do this. And those are the ones that unfortunately at times I bring here and maybe don't have, it's not as far along or maybe there's some discrepancies. So, you know, that's the last thing I wanna to bring to you guys. I'd rather bring things to you where, hey, it's all been worked out and, and maybe there's some things, but that's the thing I think that um, Joe's mentioning is there's something. So I'll, I'll also, uh, you know, re review what we're doing now and see what we can do better that way. And, you know, a lot of times it's just, they're coming in at the last minute, I got the material, that's that's when I struggle. Or that, those are the tough ones. Well, and I think the, the one thing you can't fix is the, the folks who say, I don't even know why I'm going through this process. I didn't know I had to do it. Why sure. do I have to do it? You can't fix that. The, those folks are gonna come in. Well, but, but even there, if there's, something clearly stated on the website that Steve can turn around and say, look, it was right here, or if we were to require an earlier piece to the review process right. that so that fun. they have to come in and do something that then builds in a little more time, but then for some of them that's gonna be a, a real issue too. You can only do so much handholding. <laughs> yeah. At some point they've gotta take responsibility mm -hmm. for what they're looking to do. Well, I was about to say too, a lot of people, they won't even refer to the city website. They're just going to, why Why do, this is a government overreach and stuff like that. So I think that's a thing too, is some of these people just do not care to start with. And I, I certainly sympathize with that. <laughs> oh, I, no, well, I, 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 I mean, I mean. Yeah. Right. I, no, I think yeah, you're 100% right. right. Because those they're, people, the only pull we have is the building permit. And when they yeah, find out they yeah. can't get the building permit right. until they do X, by the time they get here, they're hopping mad because they don't, yeah. it's another step to slow down their process. So two items in response to that. One is that there are communities that are way more heavy handed mm -hmm. in oh, yeah. like what? what architecture review or planning mm -hmm. requires and they get, some of them are very heavy handed and I don't think Sheboygan wants to be there. No, right? no, I agree. So where is that happy middle ground that we're, at least making sure we're, we're doing everything we can while still being a friendly right. uh, presentation. Well, and, and that's my point is some of those people, no matter, even if you're not heavy handed at all, they still will just think it's too much, you know? So that's my point is like, we're obviously never going to bat a thousand. So if we can get bat 800, that'd be great. So. Okay. I think our architectural community here in Sheboygan especially, they try to get the clients to be engaged as early on as possible, the architects that do work with them, and they try to get them involved. But as we've seen for many years, some clients are just disconnected until it affects their building permit. And then it becomes, now you're taking money out of my pocket. 
and they may become engaged. But by then, we're already here. <laughs> so a couple of things that have been talked about over the years for what could we do for that sort of client. You know, is there an architectural free clinic that the city can offer? Would the yeah. architectural community be willing to volunteer one night a month or something? Uh, maybe it's a rotating basis. But is there something we can put out there? Maybe it's a nominal charge. Maybe there's funding that the city has that they could cover some of that cost. Maybe not, but at least worth looking into. But to at least get something for that bar owner or the, the building owner who's going to do the, the work themselves mm -hmm. to give a little bit of architectural direction to them earlier rather than us? Yeah, because I think absent that, you're probably searching for a streamlined process, which there really isn't yeah. for mm -hmm. that particular client, you know, something that's easier, more accessible. They still have to go through the same process, even if they don't have an architect. But to your point, maybe we can educate them ahead of time. Yeah. Well, I assume they're they're um, welcome to come in to talk to Steve, your, you and your team, to get get them headed in sort of in the shepherd them in the right direction, if you will. Absolutely. I mean, not everyone calls in, but I mean, I I tend to have some interesting conversations to say, hey, you can hear this from me or you can go to the board and hear it and then that have them tell you and wait another two weeks, right. you know, or or we can try. So there's a lot of times that I'm trying to uh, uh, get certain things tweaked. So by the time, like um, one of the things that Joe mentioned this evening was there was quite a bit of back and forth with the gentleman here this evening mm -hmm. with the apartments. Mm -hmm. um, and, and initially there was some stuff that was, I thought, could be better and got some input and which was very helpful and then they came back and you guys approved it right but there was a lot of conversation that happened pr that. prior mm -hmm. so so i mean i'm always more than willing to meet with people because i don't want them to leave here um you know if i know that something is going to be a challenge or is you know i'll tell them up front mm -hmm. to be like hey just so you know if you do these things, I think you got a, sh a better shot. But if you don't and you're going in, either staff's going to say something or the board may something, and they know going in that ahead of time. It's not a surprise from a staff perspective. I always try to make them aware, hey, here's where we're going to be coming from. And then it's on them to right. basically go from there. But there's always an ability to do you know, those pre-development meetings and get some initial feedback from our office. Mm -hmm. And I think I, we've had good results with some of the, the folks who have come in for that preliminary review yeah. to, to kind of steer them in the right direction. And when they do come back, then it's a slam dunk. Um, but for the folks that are coming in and you know, CDs are done, the project's bid, anything that we require them to change, that's cost to them. How can we get them to come in sooner when there is still the ability to change things without significant cost impact. <laughs> We've been trying is that there, for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm, I'm relatively new to the committee, but I'm assuming that over the years these things have happened and then you've talked about them. I mean, are, are there, is there something that you can put on the, the website or would that kind of gives them a heads up that, you know, they're, you're going to want to get to us early on before you get to a certain point in your process. Otherwise, it's going to... Yeah. Right, and and that's all stuff. I'll I, I, I to be honest with you, I haven't looked at it in a little bit, and I got to. Uh, what I'll also do is work with our building inspection department to see what they have, and that's certainly something that's easy enough to put out there if it's not there. And I'm sorry, I should know this better than I do, but I will the next time. And and if it's not, it's something that's easy enough to be put on there that hey any type of commercial projects coming in and you want to talk to staff as soon as, you know, you start thinking about it. So um, that's, if that's not there, I can easily get that on there. Well, and I think that's a good point you made working with building inspection because those are the two joint processes right. that usually, that's where we find people, especially it's not the build, it's not the ground ups. It's usually, like you said, the, the existing place that wants to renovate and they've already bought everything. Right. And then they go for the building permit. Well, you haven't gotten an architecture review. I didn't know I had to. Right. Well, now it's a little late in the process. They've already put the cart before the horse. I'm not sure we'll be able to help them, but 
working with building inspection might be a way to reach out that olive branch. A good example would be that architecture building, uh, the uh, chiropractic building that we just went through. Existing building, new purpose. There's a lot of back and forth there. Right. And luckily there you had an owner who was engaged from day one. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. I think if there are um, easy to follow guidelines for some of these people when they first come in to get a permit, if it's communicated to them, check out the website. The guidelines are easily spelled out there that they know step one, step two, step three, before they go anywhere, if it's, if it's clearly spelled out, that would, might help them, you know, and, sure. and one, number two might be, you know, call Steve Sokolowski and see if yep. you can get an appointment. Yep. But I think if it's easily spelled out for some of these people, it might be helpful for them just to say, okay, I've got a, I've got a list of things I need to do before I get to point mm -hmm. sure. A. And then, I mean, but you're right, you can't, you can only take the horse to the trough, and if they're not going to look at the website, then for, that's, you know. For the building owner who, until they come in for their building permit, mm -hmm. doesn't realize that there are steps they needed to go through, yeah, there, there is, how do you I don't know if we're all flag that? <laughs> yeah. Which is Other a little scary if there's going to be a, a business owner. Right? Like but as a business oh, yeah. owner, you're allowed yeah, to do a there. certain amount of work yeah. on your own you building. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, that, I think, is one of the trickiest mm -hmm. situations. Yeah. And right. costs are obviously a concern. We don't want to yeah. be piling additional yeah, cost requirements on them. Mm -hmm. But at the same Great time, target. it's our responsibility yeah, to try and get right. the best architecture we can for the right. city. Only get so there. that's why I wanted to start this discussion. I didn't expect us to get any answers today. <laughs> but think about it over the holidays and in the new year. I'd like to keep this discussion going. And it may be a trial and error thing that something sounds good and we implement it and then find it doesn't work and try something else. Uh, but I think to just be thinking about improving the process, you know, to think about those clients who've been in here concerned that the, the impression is we're trying to tell them what they have to do with their building. Mm -hmm. And that's not what we're here for. So how to make sure that the, the perception of what we're here for is understood and um, presented as positively as possible. So the, the people or companies or uh, that, that you've had problems with in the past, some of the things that you've talked about, is there such a thing as sitting down and talking to them and say, hey, from your perspective, let's talk about this. What, can, what could we have done differently or you know, to, to improve the process? Now, obviously, there's some things they're going to say that just they're, they're just too one-sided, right? <laughs> But I, just some collaborative, you know, collaboration getting together to just see if there's a middle ground that would work for each other. Yeah, that's a good thought, Dave. And, and that's certainly something I could, you know, reach out to Benelli, you know, in, and I just mentioned Joe because he was probably the last one that we had that was, or, or the Magui project. Mm -hmm. You know, those could be a couple where there were some, you know, hiccups, if you want to sure. say that or whatever, and maybe there's some feedback. At least I can reach out to them. And maybe that's another thing is simply reaching out and saying, hey, you know, and after there's a little bit of time, maybe after the project gets done, maybe once they're in and operating or something and, and it's done, maybe there's an ability for me to go to them and say, all right, you know, based on everything that what went on, what can you tell me? And mm -hmm. what would from your perspective, from the other side, can you tell me some things that maybe where we didn't where maybe there were mistakes that could have been lessened or what have you and i'm more than willing to reach out to people to find that out as well yeah because worst case you're going to have goodwill because it shows you're you're trying to make a good faith right. effort sure. to smooth the process right and you never know whether or not that's another project down the line is there an addition is there a, they move is there something else is there someone else and so yeah i mean at a minimum I, I can do that, and and that does speak to that. At least there's reaching out and trying to figure out how to do. Maybe it, there's some improvements that could be done. Yeah, because you know what they say: you give somebody a new car, they don't like the color. <laughs> <laughs> Happens every day. <laughs> Two other factors that to be thinking about in this discussion: one is on the front end. Um, whether it's a free clinic or a low cost something to get architectural input early, how do we do that that it's not perceived as favoritism to specific architects? How do we keep it fair that everyone has equal opportunity um, and that it's not the architectural community setting it up to try and <coughs> drum up work for themselves? 
that obviously isn't the intent, but I could see where the perception is, oh, now you're just having us meet so that we have to then hire you. Well, if they're going through Steve's, you know, Steve's team, I mean, they don't have really, they really don't have any ties to anybody, and they can kind of lead them down the path as to, you know, where they need to go. Are you, are you talking when it gets real specific into design aspects of a building, or? It, one of the things that's been talked about is the sort of free clinic or a charrette model oh. that the, you know, the bar owner could show up some evening yeah. and get some free advice. Where would that come from? Who would provide it? How is it set up so there are no strings attached? Yeah, you'd have to talk to some of your colleagues and see how far they're willing to go, right? It's not like you're all sitting around during the day twiddling your thumbs right. <laughs> looking for things well, to I, do. I know Steve has a hard enough time just getting architects to serve on this board, so to do an additional uh, service right. piece, how much interest would there be? I don't know. Yeah, Bob, you just gotta be careful folks, sometimes it's with careful what you wish for yeah but yeah. if it's in the interest of improving the architecture of the city as a whole then maybe there would be folks interested in helping with that mm -hmm. uh, obviously don't have the answers it's just things that have popped up sure. as potential sure. red flags in the process that we don't want to make it perceived worse mm -hmm. right, than it already is as we try to improve it the tail end of the discussion would be um, for the conditions where We've approved something, and it gets built, and it's not what we approved. Yeah. <laughs> and what is well, the appropriate response to that for the city? Because at that point, all they can do is hold up the occupancy permit. And for a lot of the projects, yeah. it's really a, do we want to do that? So then what's the point of the architecture review board if the local contractors know that it really doesn't matter anyway? Make it a fine that makes it worse than holding up an occupancy permit. <laughs> and again, where is that balance between not being heavy handed, uh, yeah. but making sure that whatever is approved here actually is what gets But if they, if they submit some, they submit plans that, is, that you approve for construction and, city. and they deviate from it, you, you, have, you, you have to take action because otherwise you're just asking for more. Yeah. And I mean, what, what would the state do? <laughs> you know. right. it, it, it really varies by community and again it's yeah. that not wanting to appear to be the architectural Gestapo you know we but we also want to make sure that they're building what's approved that's the point of this mm -hmm. so what procedure and no answers today but to be thinking about what the city can set up to be a reasonable procedure uh, whether it's additional fines or just a more willingness to hold off on that occupancy sure. permit. Uh, That's to, always a struggle too, because you, now you start getting into the political aspect right. and hey, you're holding me up. This is the cost. Know, well, so there's, and I, I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but I'm just saying that's the reality. It's, it's one thing if it's like they just change a color on some trim or something like that. I think, I think something like that, you're, it's like okay, fine, whatever, don't do it again. But if it's like they change the entire building layout, then yeah, you need to start. Which like are, Dave which said, happened. really <laughs> coming down hard on that's it. That's exactly it. Where on that continuum does it go from being, a, oh, yeah, that's fine, to right. a, oh, I no, think that isn't. Gotta, I think when they do something that drastic, you kind of have to, in a professional way, hold their feet to the fire. Yeah. You I, really do. Yeah, yeah, Otherwise, where do you draw the line? Yeah, I would agree. I, I, like I said, it, it's one thing if it's a piece of trim around the house yeah. or something or different yeah. color gutters. Yeah. Yeah. For me personally, whatever, but like, if you're going to start changing the whole layout of the building or like for the view 14, like the different style, like the different ways sign was going, well, if they just are like, screw it, and they all went vertical, then that's different. Then yeah, you're going to need to come down hard on that, I would think, because that's, that's not proof. Do you have a specific example or two that you can think of that has happened? Not off the top of my head. No, I, I just I just know there have been buildings I've driven past and gone. That didn't take That's long. not what we approved. <laughs> I've been on there too long. Yeah, there was the one on the, well, Shoot. there's a street I won't name, but there was a building that came in. It was a design. He said he was going to build it a certain way, and it came back. Different windows, different siding, different everything. Wow. There was nothing about what we approved on that building at all. Yeah. And how, what, how did that dialogue go? 
<laughs> it didn't go anywhere because he'd already done it. <laughs> and he got his occupancy permit. You know, ah. was, yeah. And that's kind of what we're talking about. That's a deal, isn't it? No. <laughs> no. Is, there, is, there, is there a way, there, like, up front in the process as far as the permitting or whatever, where you can have a statement in there to cover yourself against that happening? What, um, oftentimes at plan commission where a lot of these projects will end up coming through, not all of them, but, and, and a lot of times we'll get it here, but I usually have like some type of um, condition that indicates, hey, if there's any changes, site plan architecturally, the, the application may have to be resubmitted back to the board, um, uh, plan commissioner, board, uh, architecture review board for those changes. So um, I don't always necessarily have that condition in here, but a lot of the projects that come here, like these big ones, like the view apartments and the bakery, both of these have to come to plan commission and that um, statement and condition is always in there. So, so I at least have something to fall back on. Now, the ones that may not have that is say for example if we approve something and it's as presented that doesn't need plan commission like say it's just an like the uh bar or something like that that's just an exterior renovation that doesn't necessarily need it but i guess if anything one of the conditions that we could put if in in future ones is just something like that hey if there's changes that needs to come back so that's easy enough to include mm -hmm. and, and even the trim color change that you mentioned, Zach, mm -hmm. just to come back at a staff level. Right, right. Well, so that and like what? any change is reviewed, right. hopefully it's a, yeah, that's no big deal. Right. Well, what I was mean was like going from like a white to like a beige versus a white to like a dark blue. That's yeah. what I meant. Like sure. that's a bigger change than, you know, an off white sure. to a white or something yeah. like that. So mm -hmm. I, agree. I, I appreciate the, the amount of discussion today. It's way more than I expected us to have today. Um, but to get those wheels turning, to think about it, ways that we can hopefully help the city to improve the process? Yeah, I think the, the trip up has always in the past been the enforcement mechanism. How do we enforce it? Because unless Steve is out there watching people build it every day to, to make sure it's what we, by the time it's done, it's too late. And that's the enforcement mechanism becomes the tough part. And it's not like I'm not watching. It's not like I'm out there every day watching. You know, I'm expecting yeah. them to build it too. But if there's certain things that get pointed out, it's not as though we're not going out there and talking to them and right. saying, hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. So on that note, we're not meeting again until January. January 9th is our next meeting. So happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Monica, whatever else is in there. Oh, uh, don't try it. <laughs> uh, and... I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Yeah, Thanks for everyone. what it's worth, everybody. I appreciate your help yes. throughout the year. You know, you, you make things easier on me. So.